Hello and welcome to this video in the ClearPass workshop series. Herman here and I will be building a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired Wireless, Active Directory and much more. So in the last video we did role based access. We were able to send back different roles depending on the uh, authentication. So um, you can see my client is connected here and if I check in the access tracker I can see that I get an employee role and I'm placed in the corporate VLAN. So very nice and we did a lot of work already. What we have uh, though is that if we check the authentication method we can see we are authenticating with username password MSJEP. While very convenient it's not really secure and in this video we are upgrading the security to uh, client based certificates. And in order to do that uh, because I have an active directory in my lab I will uh, first uh, quickly show you what I did. So I have the Active Directory Certificate Services role here on the uh, on the domain controller, and uh, if you check here for the add remove roles, let me show you um, what I did install was the Certificate Authority role, the Web Enrollment role, and the Online Responder role. So I've uh, configured these roles and. Yeah, during uh, the installation, uh, you will be asked questions and uh, it's all set up. But then uh, it is also important that we uh, can push out uh, certificates to the clients. And uh, yeah, this is the certificate authority. And what you can see here is that I have a lot of certificates enrolled. And that's all based uh, on a group policy. So if you are familiar with group policies, you can put group policies on your domain and uh, in that group policy you can set up uh, settings. So for example you can push wireless networks here uh, so people cannot uh, change the settings and the settings are automatically sent to the client. So it allows you to push out uh, settings to a lot of computers to keep them secure and to keep them managed. And here under the computer configuration under the public key policies I have two uh, certificate uh, settings here so this is the certificate services client the certificate enrollment policy which is uh, enabled um, and it is enabled to the Windows integrated authentication so it will pull automatically certificates from the AD and yeah that's pretty convenient if you do it like this and here under the uh, enrollment policy configuration here we can uh, enable it and uh, make sure that uh, certificates that are about to expire they are automatically refreshed um, so yeah it will be done all in the background and automatically and yeah here you can set uh, maybe that it's uh, renewing the certificates uh, before they are ended um, and uh, another settings here below for the user configuration. Uh, yeah, we have similar things here under the security settings. And yeah, we have the public key uh, policy here as well. So we will be pushing out both a client certificate for the machine authentication and a user certificate for the user certificate. One thing that took me quite a while to find out is why I couldn't get user certificates to my uh, user and uh, the issue seems to be that the default templates are using the email address in the Active Directory object of the user and I didn't fill that in. So as soon as I entered the email address in the uh, in the user um, it yeah, suddenly uh, started sending out uh, also the user uh, certificate. So Let's see in our client if that indeed worked. So where is my client? Uh, there's my client. So we can check here uh, under the uh, MMC. Then we add remove snap-ins and we do the certificates. Let's first do for uh, the computer account. And let's also add that for the user account. So what we can see now here is for the computer under the personal certificates. Oh. 
what we can see is that we have uh, two certificates and this one um, is issued by the certificate authority that I just showed you. And uh, the same here under the personal for the current user, we can see that for uh, the user admin one, a certificate was sent out. So now basically what we need to change um, is uh, just on the uh, client we need to change uh, things. So um, let's here go to the settings for the network, network uh, the wireless properties here to security. What we can do here is instead of using protected EAP, we will be using a smart card or other certificate. Then here in the settings, um, it always uh, makes sense to put in the radius server certificate name. Aruba lab. Oh, lock. And it's issued by the uh, Aruba workshop CA. Um, yep. These settings should be okay. And let's check here. So let's switch this for now to computer authentication. So let's see if that will work. So it should be reconnecting now to the network. It is connected. And if we check here in our access tracker, what we now can see is that this user is authenticated and if we uh, check in it we can see that it is EAP TLS and uh, because we are machine authenticated we are put in the corporate VLAN and here under the um, let's see under the computer attributes here we can see as well the details of the certificate so stuff like the subject common name the issuer uh, common name. Um, yeah, all these info um, is available here. So yeah, very nice. And yeah, pretty easy. So uh, you should you sh saw that just uh, because we already prepared the service. So if we check the service, we already put in here uh, EAP TLS as an authentication method, we can could just switch to uh, user uh, to, to certificate authentication. Now, let's now move this to uh, user authentication. So let's get back here, wireless properties. And here under the advanced settings, we switch to user or computer authentication. So then it will, during the uh, initial phase when the computer is booting, it will use the computer authentication. And afterwards, it will use the uh, user certificate to authenticate and um, what we can see now is that it's not connecting. So let's go. If it's not connecting, first place to check is in the access tracker. And what we can see here is that the radius request is rejected. And if we go in the radius, uh, uh, in the radius request, we can go to the alert step. And here, what we can see is that the user is not found. Um, yeah, and because the user is not found, it's uh, it's not authenticated. But how does it come that the user is not found? So the problem is that uh, I already told you in the template for user templates, uh, for user certificates, uh, the email address is used, not the username. So if we are sending the email address, which is in the certificate to Active Directory, of course, um, that is not resolvable. And there are a few ways to solve that. Uh, the easiest way is to use here in the services instant authentication here we have the option strip username so what we can do is we can strip everything so for example if we take this setup we will uh, strip everything uh, including the at uh, from the username so we will just take the part before the at um, let's save this and let's see if we are reconnecting the client So we see we are now connected. And now we can see that we are um, indeed uh, connected to the network and we are accepted. So um, 
yeah, stripping the username is one method. Another method is uh, to modify the uh, authentication source. So what you can see here under the authentication source, if we go to the AD, um, what we are uh, doing here for the authentication is that we have a filter query here. And um, if you are a bit handy or can look it up uh, properly, what you can do here uh, is uh, not only check if the SAM account name uh, equals the username that was sent by the client, but you can uh, check if it's either the SAM account name, which is the AD username, or the email address. And in that case, the LDAP query will uh, return the correct data as well. Um, and then you can uh, use either the uh, full username or the email address for the specific user to authenticate. So in this video, what we did is we switched the client from uh, EAP MS Chap uh, V2 authentication to EAP TLS uh, authentication with certificates, which is much stronger authentication. I also showed you how to set up your AD in order to do that. So it was a bit quick, uh, but at least it will provide you the steps and the configuration that needs to be done to get certificates sent out to the clients. So um, I thought it was a uh, yeah, pretty nice video on EAP TLS. So see you next uh, in the next video. So in the next video, what we will be doing is uh, we are uh, setting up the authentication for the ClearPass itself against the Active Directory. So there's much more to come in this series. And uh, if you subscribe, you will be notified if there are new videos in this ClearPass workshop series. So please like and comment. And thank you very much for watching.